what's up guys it's day welcome back to my channel in today's video we're gonna do a pickups video it's a quite huge haul that i would say a lot of vintage pickups man so without further ado let's get into this video so starting off with pants i bought two carhartt double knee uh double knee uh carpenter pants and let's just start off with the black ones so I got these black ones for about $30 um, off of Depop. Uh, that's also one of like the best places to shop for deals. Got this off of Depop and it just comes in this really nice washed black. It's still quite dark, but it's like this indigo black. I don't know if it's showing up very well, but I love these pants. They look so good with anything. They're a little short, so I might release the hem just to give myself a little bit of like length but probably not. I think these will best work with some high tops um, because they float just right over my shoe. And I kind of like it to kind of drape over my shoe a little bit more, but love these. And then the tan colorway, I'm sure you guys have seen this in my recent video, um, releasing the hem on your vintage pants. Uh, got these also for about $35 on, I believe it was Depop as well. Actually, I'm sorry, it was on Instagram, an Instagram selling page. And if I can remember correctly, I'll put all of the links to some of the shops that sell really good items, not just one great item, um, and put it in the description for you guys. So yeah, just these nice double knee uh, Carhartt pants, paid about $35 off of Instagram as well. And yeah, they're just really nice. So the next pickup we have, I wanted some sort of formal dress pant to not only wear with like outfits um, in my workwear style, I wanted something to also accommodate me being um, going on internships or something like that. So I decided to pick up these Wrangler flare dress pants off of Amazon. They were about $32 and I'll leave a link in the description below to them. The sizing of these things are so bad, dude. So bad. I'm gonna have to get the waist somehow tailored, but um, to give you guys a reference, I'm hover between a 31 and a 32 waist and I had to buy like a 36 in these a 36 waist for the the legs and length to fit right it's 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 utterly ridiculous <laughs> that these these fit this way i had to return them and then buy another pair or exchange for another pair but honestly they're kind of worth it i'll show you guys a uh, maybe instagram photo of me wearing them they drape really well over the shoe now that we're done with pants let's move on to some outerwear section i'm going to move towards hoodies all right so the first hoodie i got was a 90s russell athletic gray hoodie just a very simple hoodie to wear really like it um very thin lightweight nothing really to talk about um and yeah i've been wearing this kind of on and off recently it's got a really tight uh it's got a really tight hood hood i don't know what it is about russell or who was producing Russell, but the neckline is so tight. I might have to cut it open, but I kind of don't want to because I don't want to look like um, the uh, a hoodie that I'm thinking of right now. But I don't really want to cut it open. It's just too pristine condition, and you never know if you're going to sell a garment, so it's good to just keep them in contact. So I don't think I'm going to sell this just because it's a basic color. I got this one in gray, and I also got it in two other colors. I got this one in green, also a 90s one, a nice little Ray, Ray Mia green, <laughs> really good green. And then I got it in black, but this one is not a 90s one. This is a gold gold tag Russell hoodie if you want to like see the tag um I think the difference between um different ages of hoodies is definitely not only the neckline and the sleeve length but the hoodie pouch in general is very smaller um I think it looks good with anything that I wear obviously it's just black it's basic uh and yeah my recommendation for getting like vintage gold tag hoodies is sizing up about two times, two times worth because it does shrink. They're not pre-shrunken and uh, they just hit or miss. It's a hit or miss with buying uh, buying vintage Russell hoodies, that is. 
so moving away oh and also i paid about for this one i paid 60 just because it's a gold tag russell and for the other two i paid about 20 dollars uh shipped so you know if you can find a steal find the steal so the next thing we're going to look on to is two t-shirts i have two other things in transit um, actually three other things in transit and maybe they'll make it in another pickups video down the line but the two that i have right here are this rob zombie uh, I guess it's not really technically vintage because it's printed on some sort of comfort soft Hanes and it's printed in 2012 but yeah it's got a really nice back hit it's got a really nice back hit uh, front looks really sick love it the, uh, the neckline is a little wide for me but I think I can make it work it's gonna just add to my black tee assortment that I have going on really like it nothing really too much to say about this and then for this one I have a 1895 to 1995 uh vintage Russell I guess post office t-shirt it's uh it's got this telegraph Texas post office and by the way I will leave a, a link in the description on how you can help save USPS if you didn't already know I'm not going to talk too much about it, but please click that link so we can save our post offices. <laughs> and anyway, moving on, the back hit says No Place But Telegraph, Texas. I thought that was cool. I've got some homies in Texas and this shirt just makes me think of them. So now we're going to move on to the outerwear, like the jacket section that I've been acquiring. And I was really surprised at this first one because I am someone that just never buys fast fashion stuff. You know, I'll walk into H&M and something like that and I just feel bad that these are cheaply produced items and sometimes it's a hit or miss, but you know, at the end of the day, if you like the items and you think that they have longevity, I would say buy them. But this first one, I saw it and it reminded me of a Helmet Lang piece that was in my 2020 wish list. Um, it's this, it's this H&M utilitarian bomber puffer bomber they had it labeled something weird but anyway it was only how much was it it was only 31 bucks and that's crazy that's so cool but anyway it's it's a it's a it's a cheaply made down puffer jacket but i love the color and i love the simplicity of the front pockets they were made they were in i believe they were in the they were in the women's section clearance and I thought that I would just pop over there. I usually check the men's or women's section, see if I like anything this time. And you know, most of the time I don't, but this jacket actually surprised me. I kind of like it. It's not cropped, but it fits a little cropped because I think the size was a medium. Um, hits, hits the waistline really well. Really looking forward to wearing this. It's in this kind of olive colorway, I guess. Um, but it, sometimes it comes off as like an ash green to me, but not really sure. And the only thing I don't like about it is the sheen. I really would love this to be in a matte finish, but you, you know, you get what you paid for and I really like it. I think that I can, I'm not really too rough on my clothing, so I think this could last for a very long time. And with, you know, some character to it, it's just gonna get, like, only get better unless it just falls apart. But, um, it's got this back hood, nothing too fancy. The inside is this dark olive green color. And overall, it's just a really nice piece. There's nothing really bad about it. So for our next piece, we have a chore jacket I've been looking for, the perfect chore jacket. And, you know, haven't been able to find one that I really like. And, I, you know, I have kind of long arms. So with vintage chore jackets, the sleeve length can be a hit or miss. But I luckily stumbled upon this one, <laughs> but I like it. It's just really nice. It's got a couple of character hits, got a couple of paint splatters, but it fits my sleeve. The sleeve length is so good. Like, I tell you guys, I have long arms. Like, I'm not even that tall, but I have long arms. It's just weird. And it hits right over my watch, and that's really nice. It's got some failing around the collar. 
Um, I'm thinking about asking Tegan to chain stitch my name um, right here. And it's just beautiful. There's a front panel that covers the buttons and it's in this darker indigo wash uh, underneath obviously because it hasn't been um, kind of potent to the sun. It's got some, uh, it's got an inside pocket, which I thought was really cool because I thought this outer pocket was removed when I first saw it on screen, but it actually is the inside pocket. Two pockets on the front, as you can see, and just hits really well. I am, I'm not really sure about the sizing of chore jackets because they can run from, you know, small and shrunken to really oversized. I would just say find your measurements and you should be good. So the next piece is actually I'm going to save that piece for last. We're going to go to this piece that I got uh, for about $45 on Etsy again. So this next jacket is a hunting jacket. I really got inspired by Sal. Uh, he wore this jacket like a while ago, sold in already, but I thought the color and the construction of the jacket was so beautiful. This is a vintage hunting jacket. It kind of feels like a chore jacket, but it's not necessarily. It's got these two front big pockets. They're actually kind of like 3D pockets because they belge out into the inside. And then it's got uh, some covering. I'm not really sure the proper construction words for a hunting jacket, but it's got some panels in the back and um, I'm sure that's where you can like harbor some gear. Uh, and yeah, that's really it. I released the hem, but I need to press them down because the, sh the sleeves are very wide and short, probably because when you hold up a gun, if since it's a hunting jacket, you wouldn't want to necessarily have your sleeves um, near any sort of trigger. So that's why the sleeves probably fit that way because of its boxy interior. The measurements just didn't make sense. So came up with a thought about it. Um, the brand of the jacket is called American Field. And yeah, it's just a really nice jacket. It's got these two tabs on the back. I'm not really sure what those are used for, but maybe you can tell me in the comments below. It's got these nice honey chestnut buttons. Beautiful. It's beautiful. The sun fade made this wonderful. It needs to be ironed for sure, but I'm definitely going to wear this some more in the fall. Cannot wait for the fall. <laughs> Just cannot wait. Okay, and the last jacket, the last outerwear piece is a piece that was featured quite a bit on Instagram. <laughs> and shout out to Oshfits for reposting and sharing it and influencing the train of people to take a kind liking to this jacket. But uh, so this jacket is a beautiful Kanagawa University Tennyson Field varsity jacket. The inspiration for this jacket for me when I was searching for one was the Louis Vuitton uh, varsity Wizard of Oz jacket. I really, really wanted that jacket, but of course it's it's way outside my price range. I think I saw it for like six thousand dollars or something like that. But I wanted that jacket and it was like an inspiration for me to find other jackets like it. And I didn't like any of the universities here or sports teams or whatever. I'm not into that. So I thought that I would search for jackets that specifically were out of country. And this Japanese varsity jacket hit it on the nail. I found it on Depop, strangely listed as off-white. <laughs> I don't know why it was listed as off-white but it was, it's beautiful. So, so let me walk you through all of the features of this jacket. There's just too many to explain. So the front piece is this, pat, this W patch, probably for Kanagawa University lawn soft tennis team. It's got leather uh, contrast, sticking, uh, contrast stitching pockets. Uh, and it also has a internal mesh inside the pocket, which is really nice. The lettering on the front says, we keep along the Victory Road with good friends in Yokohama. It does have a grammatical error, but since this was made in Japan, I'm sure the English conversion was not in their favor when, <laughs> when writing this. It should say 33rd. So it's just a good laugh when I see it. I thought about removing it, uh, just removing the 33rd, Part, but 
I think I'm just gonna keep it to good laugh. And the sleeves are completely leather and softened and kept well in contact. The sleeves are of course cotton, uh, cotton scrunchy. It, uh, the sleeves are of course cotton, uh, replicating the collar. And then we have the back. The back is gorgeous. The back says white. I'm not really sure why it says white. I've been looking for more information about why it says white. But anyway, it says Eastern 1963, lawn and soft tennis in Yokohama again in this really beautiful contrast with this gold and white um, cursive font. I think I, I just really love it. Typographically, it looks great. The designing of this jacket looks beautiful, well-constructed. The inside is a quilted material. I had to do a little bit of repair just because it had a little bit of a hole. And then the patch says uh, Hawkwald produced by that since 1983. I'm not really sure how old this jacket is, but it has to be very old. Really beautiful. Uh, on the sleeve, it says Yukiko on the, uh, I guess my right, my left, your right sleeve. Um, it says number 33, Yukiko. And I'm not really sure who this belongs to, but I will cherish this jacket forever. I paid $85 for this jacket, shipped, and that was on Depop, so I'm not really sure from a selling perspective if he made his money's worth, but I sure did. Fits absolutely perfect, so yeah, love this jacket. It's so heavy, oh my god. That jacket is going to be beautiful for, for fall, winter. <clears throat> I've got two pairs of shoes to show you. I actually have three pairs of shoes, but I'm not really sure about the third pair. I may sell them. I'm not really sure yet. But the first pair of shoes are the Nike Craft 2007 edition with the back suede panel on the back. And then uh, we've got some different type of laces. This is by far the most comfortable Air Force One I have ever worn. The leather is super tumbled, so soft and plush. Love it to death. I think that if you want to buy your first Air Force One or switch it up, if you're an old time Air Force One wearer, then try these, try these out for size. They're really nice, they're really comfortable. They match with anything, but if you're a college student, I believe you get a 20% discount. So these drop from the original retail of 150 to 96. Okay, so I paid $96. And I think after shipping, it goes to like 120. But without your discount, it, you're probably paying about like 130 $150 for one Air Force. And you know, that could be steep and that could not be affordable for all. But Use that discount if you are a college student. Boy, you will love these. You, They're so good. They're so, so nice. I can't even... I can't even explain how beautiful this shoe is. I like basic shoes. What can I say? <laughs> so the next shoe I got that I may be selling and I'm not really sure, but if I do sell, I have a Depop. And for my vintage items that are a little like older, I sell them on obsolete. But I got these Doc, these Doc Martens. Uh, I forget the model, to be honest. I wish it said the, does it say the model? Uh, 1484 in size eight. I can't believe these are size eights because they fit very loose unless I need to wear like very thick socks, but they're a little too big. Um, they kind of fall off. So I'm trying to find like the perfect inseam. If you have a perfect inseam recommendation, please let me know. Cause I really don't want to sell these, but I may have to. They're really chunky, go with a lot of stuff, dress up the outfits paired nicely with um, my dress pants that I personally got. So. Nothing too much to say about these. I really like them. Uh, I paid $30 for these on Depop 
yet again. I am not lying about these prices. You can't tell me you can't find steals, as Jacob Keller used to say. So definitely would pick these up, dresses up any outfit, and yeah, just challenges you to be a little different. The of this video is accessories. Um, every person needs some accessories and so i thought that i would need a new kind of key locket keychain device from Ore, um new york love it love it so much um if you don't know who if you don't know what Ore is it's uh ray mia's brand i did an entire kind of uh video on who ray mia is if you like check that out i'll leave a card in one of these corners above so uh, thought that I would need it. Looks really sick with my car keys. I really like it. And uh, this bag, huge tote bag, gives me LL Bean vibes with this contrast stitching, double canvas lockdown amazingness. It's got a kind of key locket chain, so you can just like snap on your keys like this, have it showing out. Uh, it's Heavily inked with Ore New York symbol, world, world symbol, and then art studio. The inside has a has a pocket. It just looks really good. I've been using this for traveling, um, going with friends, going going out. I've been using this probably the most, more than any of my bags. Um, I just like it. It's just it goes with everything. It's big. And when I need a big bag, Ori's got your back. Ori's got your back. Yep. Super excited for Ray's future releases. So excited because, man, it's going to be amazing. Talking for this long is so hard sometimes, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I hope you guys enjoyed the pickups. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you like this video, leave a like for me. It helps me reach other people to build this community, you know? Um, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys next Sunday slash Monday. I hope everyone's doing super well in their classes. I'm doing fine. I think I'm doing fine. <laughs> so I'll catch you guys next time. My name is Day. Have a good day. Peace out. I have to clean up everything, dude. Thank you.